Okay, so instead of going step by step through the baking process, I decided to come back and re-record some commentary for it. So right now we're just looking at the result of the bake of the last video, and I'm explaining how there's this little waviness, you can't really see it, but what you need to do to get rid of that, if you even want to, from here you can't really tell, but if you, if you want to, you'll just have to increase your samples and that'll reduce the waviness on the bevels. Um, I'm also talking about this normal map error. Uh, you need to apply a different shader to your floaters that doesn't have the bevel shader because what it's doing is it's beveling the norm or the it's beveling the floaters which we don't want because we modeled our floaters without the bevel mod or bevel shader in mind. Um, also, to increase your baking times, uh, you can set your performance tiles to the size of your image. And right here, I'm explaining you don't need to build a cage. I just use uh, that cage tick box and the extrusion depth and it will use your average normals to project a cage and it will work just as well as if you had built a cage mesh but without any of the headaches of like um, it mesh triangulating wrong or you know something and it just doesn't work so just don't build a cage just take cage and use the extrusion depth. Alright another thing is you don't have to create a new image every time you can just change in the uh, UV editor where it says image you can just click discard or change it back to generated and that'll let you rebake to it and then you can just save it after each bake so it looks like coming up we're baking the curvature map and I do not do this with pointiness pointiness is geometry based and it can cause kind of a lot of headaches and inaccurate results if you don't have really dense source geometry. So instead, uh, you can see the node setup on screen. I'm gonna use an amb two ambient occlusion nodes with one set to the inside and one set to outside. And you gotta set it to a really low value to isolate the edges. Then I'll run it through a map range node to uh, get the edges to 0.5 to one and the crevices from zero to 0.5 and then just overlay them. And right here I'm doing a kind of unnecessary step, I actually don't recommend doing this, but I'm just increasing the bevel slightly and overlaying it with the previous curvature map, and that gives it kind of more of a transition. You can see just a little bit right there, but anyway, this will massively increase your bake times, so I don't suggest doing this. It Really, I don't think it'll give you any sort of benefit, and if it does, it's marginal, so just don't do this. This was a big mistake. I was baking for like a couple hours because of this and it was more of a headache than it needed to be. That's why I'm coming back and giving you these tips so you don't have to make the same mistakes I did. So here I'm just kind of automating it so that the t tiers of overlaying curvature uh, automatically get uh, more spread out. And then I'm going to put it in a no into a node group. But here I'm showing you why pointing this doesn't work. If you look at this result, it's just like it just totally doesn't work. Anyway, um, I think that's about it for curvature. I put it into a group. But another thing we can do is we can duplicate our curvature two times. And so we'll have a small curvature, a medium, and a large. And I'll put that into a combined RGB node so we can bake three levels of curvature into one map. And in texturing, that's really gonna help out, so do do that step if you're gonna follow along with my texturing. Uh, that's actually really important in my uh, in the process for creating edgeware in uh, future tutorials. So here, yeah, I'm just continuing to set up the curvature map and you can see it looks pretty good. It looks actually really good. Anyway, uh, there's not much more to say about curvature, I don't think, so I'm just gonna let this play out. Oh yeah, another thing. So, in the ambient occlusion map, you can plug in your bevel shader normals, but like I find that tends to give a less sharp result and it really doesn't benefit anything so again like if you really want to yeah, I guess it would technically be more accurate to have your curvature map influenced by the bevels uh, from the bevel shader but 
yeah, just I don't suggest doing that. And here you can see I've combined it into one RGB image and then I'll bake that image to the low poly of these sites. And let's see, I'm not sure what's going on here. Looks like I'm just going through the bake settings. Alright, so I finished baking that. I baked it off camera. And you can see what that looks like. And if we separate the red, green, and blue channels, we've got three different levels of curvature, which is again going to be really useful in texturing. Alright, and now I'm um, just showing you that you can still contrast this, and it'll really hold up well because it's a 32 bit image. That's important. Bake at 32 bits, it'll give you a lot more like wiggle room and and texturing and in um, especially for normal maps when you're when we're gonna paint some bump information with uh, normal map decals in the texturing it's uh, really beneficial to work in 32-bit like uh, my um, the normal map decals that I made and set up for texture painting they just they just wouldn't work in unless I had 32-bit uh, mode enabled it would be really fuzzy and uh, the angles of the normal map weren't really coming through it just looked all very um very rounded and it really wasn't the effect I was going after anyway now I'm baking ambient occlusion for ambient occlusion do plug in your bevel shader it uh, will give a better result and we're gonna do the same technique of packing in uh, multiple uh, I guess data datum, I don't know, multiple data channels into one RBG Im RGB image. So here I'm just isolating the world normal of our high poly and plugging it into the green channel. I couldn't think of anything else to add to the blue channel, but anyway, that, that'll be useful, the top down mask. If you want to add, say, like dust only to the top, or if you want to give it like a, a sun, a, a faded sun effect, like where the polymer has been bleached from the sun. So yeah, that's what that's for. And now I'm just um, continuing baking. So I've got my three maps baked out. But yeah, just now I'm going to do it on the rest of the mesh. Let's uh, skip ahead here. I end up doing a 1-4K map for the front sight, 1-4K map for the rear sight, and 1-4K map for the the whole gun which is um you know it's, it's a kind of okay solution should have done oh and I did another 4k for the mag it, it was it was pretty good anyway another thing limitations with baking with the bevel shader uh, the smaller your UV islands are so for the receiver it was really packed in tightly right so our UV islands our texel density was relatively small so I really had to increase the samples to get it to a, uh, a decent result so, you know, it all worked out in the end for uh, this model, but I think in the future I'm going to stick with the uh, Boolean plus Remesh method or the um, Bevel and Subdivide because the Bevel modifier does not bake perfect results. It's, it's a really, I guess, fast concepting option. And here I'm showing you the difference between baking with a cage and without a cage, so make sure you bake with the cage enabled but anyway the bevel modifier is really useful um, it's really easy to get a nice result and the other thing is the reason I started using the bevel modifier in my last project the M18 was because it was easy on my computer right the remesh method or the remesh method of generating high polys uh, you know you got like millions of polygons per model and it's just kind of slows down everything but with a bevel modifier it performs pretty well but you kind of pay for that in time with baking, so, you know, it's a trade-off. Uh, anyway, we're coming to the end here, so I'm going to stop recording and let this play out.